Okay, one of the things that Dialog EPL can do is multiple assignment. So you can put several variables, for example, A on the bar, uh, delta on the bar, S, and so on and so on. And as you can see, we can use on the bars also. Um, and you can assign several things, for example, one or two, and then a string, and then even something even more complex, if you want to. And if you look after, A on the bar is two, delta, and you can also see that the autocomplete allows you to using the right arrow to complete automatically the name of variables. Here's the second one. And the last one is on the bar. Again, we autocomplete. And here we go. Okay, function assignment. This is something that's very handy. For example, let's say that you have variable A which is assigned 90. And let's say you want to add 3 to A. So normally what you would do is A is assigned A plus 3, giving you 90. But what you can do is just say a plus assign, in this case, 4, and then a is assign 97. Now let's say that we have something like this. We have a vector of values, and we want to change the second element like this. We want to multiply it by, say, 3. Then this does the trick. Had this index been a very complex expression, this would have been a time saver. Control structures. They're not new, they've been introduced a while back. They use a system of colon followed by keywords. And in this case here, for example, we have if something, some code, then else, then code, and, and if. And if we try this one here, for example, if and one with the number four, then we can see that the function worked properly. Namespaces. Namespaces are like mini workspaces. You can create them two ways. Um, either using the system command ns, which creates a namespace, or using the uh, system function quad ns. In this case, it's empty, and we give it a name, for example, mv2. Now we have two objects, which we can find using the system command obs. Now we're in the workspace, but if we want to, we can move into them by using the system command change space and move into one of them. And then we can look and see that we have no variables, but we can create some. And if we look now, we only have that variable. If we move back to the root namespace, the normal workspace, then we can look now and see that we have no x in there. If we want to access x, we have to use the dot notation, like this. Now, nb1 and nb2 are what is called refs. They're references to namespaces. We can use them in vectors. I could put, for example, like this nb1, nb2, and now v is a vector of two elements, two namespaces. I can say v index 1 is assigned, dot x is assigned 890, for example. And if I were to ask v dot x, the first one refers to nb1, which has an x, which is 890. The second one is nb2, which has an x, which is 90, and we have both values. There are two rests that are always available to you. The, one, the first one is hash, which is the main workspace. The second one is quad SC, which is a session workspace. And this one is quite important. It contains everything into your environment. For example, file edit. All these things are part of your environment. When you have the runtime definition, this is empty. But when you have the development edition, then all these things are available to you. And you can actually change into them just like any other namespace. Now we're in Quad SE and you can see on the top there that it says we're in clear workspace but we're also in the Quad SE. This would be the same for any other namespace. Quad path. Now let's suppose that I have a utility F in NB2 that I define like this. Quad FX. And notice how Quad FX takes a vector of strings to define a function. It can also take a, a character matrix but it also accepts a vector of vectors. So now if I do f, it does not exist here. It exists only in nb2. Now if I wanted to be able to access all the functions in nb2 like this, all I have to do is say quad path is assigned nb2. And now when I use f, it finds it. Quad ML. This is a system function specific to Dialog APL. It allows you to change the behavior of certain functions. It was introduced for to be compatible with APL2. So normally, the main difference here is that if you, if you use pick, for example, pick will normally take the first element of a vector, for example, 3, 9, 2, it gives you the first element. And if you use uh, mix, it will take 
two vectors and turn them into a matrix, for example. If you use QuadML2, then this behavior is reversed. What happens here is that you get the first one here, and in this case, well, it's not going to change anything because it's a vector, it remain, remain a vector, but it reverses the behavior, as you can see. Jot. Jot in Dialog APL is a special operator. It allows you to combine things together, for example, to bind a, an argument to a function, as in this case here, the function double is assigned the multiplication by 2. So that now, whenever I say double of, let's say, 3, it multiplies by 2. Dialog APL allows you to define your own operators. Here's an example. This is your own power operator, which takes a function uh, fn as left operand, and n as right operand, which it applies to variable y given as right argument. And it applies the function n times to y. Let's see it in action. Let's go back here. We know that double uh, 3 is 6. Double of double of 3 is 12. Let's do it a couple more times. And it should give us 40. So if we apply the function double 4 times, it should give us to 3. Dialog APL has something called direct definition function. This is something unique to Dialog APL. No other APL has this. It allows you to apply certain functions defined within braces using alpha as the left argument and omega as the right argument. In this case here, this function does the average of a vector. So let's apply it to this vector. On each element, this is what it returns. Error trapping. Dialog APL allows you to trap errors two ways. One is with the control structures that you can put into functions only. The other one is using the system function quad trap. This function takes a number, which represents the error you want to trap, or a series of numbers for that matter, what type of execution you want to do, and then the statement you want to execute when it happens. In this case here, what we're saying is that if you ever have a domain error, error 11, then execute the following, which displays a message. So normally what would happen is that you would have divide by 9 is fine, divide by 0 should give you a domain error, but it is trapped and this is what we see. Shy results. Dialog APL has this notion of shy results where you can specify that a result, if not assigned, will not be displayed. So for, here's an example. QuadDL1 here does not display its result because most of the time we don't use it. If we really want to see the result, we have to either assign it or force it to be displayed. Dialog APL is a special syntax for function. Here we see that the function can return a result. Actually, it returns multiple results, R1 and R2. And because of the braces, it means if the result is not captured, then the result is shy. It won't be displayed. The braces around the left argument mean that the, it is optional. If it is not there, then APL will not complain. And the parentheses around the three right arguments means that the function accepts three and only three arguments. Libraries. Dialog APL does not support library numbers anymore. If you need to find what's in the folder, what you have to do is specify exactly what the folder name is. As for workspaces, Dialog uses the extension DWS and DCF for files, but this is not enforced, and if you want, you can actually save your workspace under any name you care to give it with any extension. Some special functions, the GCD, which uses the AND symbol, and the LCM, which is used the OR symbol, just like in Sharp APL, and the power operator, which uses the special symbol star umlaut, and as we can see, it returns the same result as we had previously. There are also union, which returns you the union of two sets, intersection returns the intersection of two sets, and scattered indexing, which allows you to pick specific elements in a matrix. Finally, there's threads. Those allow you to start processes in the background. For example, here I have wait that has been started in the background. If we look in the stack, it's pending and it won't return until it's finished, in this case a few seconds. Well, that's it. That's all the time I had. So have fun with APL.